Good afternoon, and thank you for joining the United States Copyright Office for today's webinar on group registration of works published on an album of music. My name is Ananda Shankar Majumdar, and I'm with the Office of Public Information and Education. Today we'll be discussing the new group registration option for works published on an album of music known as GRAM. The office introduced this new group registration option on March 26th. Our goal for today is to provide information about this option and highlight the related resources that will be posted on the Copyright Office's website. We will reserve time for questions and answers at the end. You can submit a question during the webinar by using the Q&A panel accessed by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We will answer questions after the presentations are complete. However, we might not answer all of the submitted questions during the webinar. The session is being recorded. All participants are muted for the duration of the program to reduce background noise. If you lose the connection, please rejoin the webinar. A recording of this webinar will be made available on the GRAM webpage, copyright.gov slash GRAM. If you choose to participate, any of your questions will be included in the recording as part of the record. Let me introduce Melissa Bethel. She is Assistant Division Chief in the Performing Arts Division of the Office of Registration Policy and Practice. Thanks, Ananda, and good afternoon, everyone. As Ananda said, I work in the Performing Arts Division of the Office of Registration Policy and Practice, the office that administers the US copyright registration system. When you submit an application to the Copyright Office to register musical works or sound recordings, Registration staff in the Performing Arts Division will examine the application and copies to make sure that all legal and formal requirements of the copyright law are met. Melissa, let me ask you, what is a group registration of works published on an album of music? Yes, a group registration of works published on an album of music, or GRAM, is a special accommodation for registering multiple works with one application and one filing fee. The office created a group registration option that may be used to register up to 20 musical works that were published on the same album. The office also created a separate group registration option that may be used to register up to 20 sound recordings that were published on the same album, along with any photographs, artwork, or liner notes that were first published with that album. So what is a group registration? Is it different from other types of registrations? As a general rule, a as a general rule, a registration covers an individual work, and an applicant should prepare a separate application, filing fee, and deposit for each work that is submitted for registration. When Congress enacted the copyright law, it gave the register of copyrights the discretion to allow groups of related works to be registered with one application and one filing fee. This procedure is known as group registration. So what might make the GRAM application useful? Well, GRAM was created for songwriters who publish musical works on the same album who don't have the time or resources to register all of their works individually. For similar reasons, GRAM may benefit performers, producers, and record labels who publish multiple sound recordings on the same album. The filing fee for a GRAM registration is lower than the fees for registering each work with a separate application. And preparing one application to register multiple works is much quicker than preparing a separate application for each individual work. As a legal matter, a group registration covers the copyrightable authorship in each work in the group. A copyright owner may be entitled to separate awards of statutory damages for each work in the group if the works are registered before the infringement began or within three months after the work was first published. So how much does the GRAM application cost? The filing fee for registering a group of up to 20 works on a GRAM application is $65. The filing fee for registering one work on a standard application is also $65. Thus, an applicant who registers up to 20 works using the GRAM option may save a substantial amount in filing fees. And when did the office introduce this new GRAM option? The new applications were released on March 26, 2021. The office has created a new website where we will post information and resources for this option, including frequently asked questions, a new circular, video tutorials for completing the applications, and help text that accompanies the applications. We'll review the webpage later in this video. Additionally, 
Staff in the Office of Public Information and Education are available to answer questions about the new Graham application by a phone and email. Melissa, you said the office created a new option registering musical works and a separate option for registering sound recordings, photographs, artwork, and liner notes. What's the difference between a musical work and a sound recording? Sure. A musical work, such as a song with music and lyrics, and a particular recording of that song are two separate works under the copyright law. A musical work consists of the music, which may include melody, rhythm, and or harmony, as well as any accompanying lyrics. And a recording of a particular performance of a song is a sound recording. Could you give us an example? Sure. So let's consider the song Respect and a recording of Aretha Franklin performing the song Respect. The music and lyrics for the song and a recording of Aretha Franklin performing that song are two distinct works. The music and lyrics are the musical work and a recording of an artist performing the music and lyrics is a sound recording. Will applicants be able to register a musical work and a sound recording with the same group registration application? No. The office created one application for musical works and a separate application for sound recordings. To register a group of musical works, you must submit the online application for musical works from an album. This application can only be used to register musical works, either with or without lyrics. It cannot be used to register sound recordings. To register a group of sound recordings, you must submit the online application for sound recordings from an album. This application may also be used to register photographs, artwork, or liner notes that were first published on the same album. But to be clear, the application for sound recordings from an album cannot be used to register music or lyrics. Are there any other requirements that must be satisfied in order to keep these group registration, op to use these group registration options? Yes, there are. Group registration options impose administrative costs and burdens on the Copyright Office. To ensure that this process is both efficient and cost effective, applicants must comply with the following requirements to qualify for this option. First, you must submit at least two, but no more than 20 musical works or sound recordings. Next, all of the works being registered must generally be first published on the same album. Note that there is a limited exception to this rule shown on your screen that applies to some works which were first published individually, and you may read more about this exception in the help text for each application. Next, all of the works must be first published in the same country. And you must provide the date and nation of first publication for each work being registered. Next, you must provide a title for the album and a title and track number for each musical work or sound recording being registered. All of the works must be created by the same author or the works must have a common joint author. And finally, the copyright claimant or co-claimants for all of the works must be the same person or, or the same organization. And note that we will discuss these author and claimant requirements in more detail shortly. Just to confirm, Melissa, how many works can you submit with a group registration application? You may submit at least two, but no more than 20 musical works with the application for musical works from an album. If you submit the application for sound recordings from an album, you may submit at least two, but no more than 20 sound recordings. There is no limit on the number of photos, artwork, or liner notes that may be submitted with this application. But to register these types of works, you must use the application for sound recordings from an album. You cannot register photos, artwork, or liner notes with the application for musical works from an album. Well, so you, noticed, you noted that the works must be created by the same author or that they must have a common joint author. What did you mean by that? So we'll start by talking about who the author of a work is. The author of a musical work is the person who created the music or lyrics that appear in the work, such as a composer, lyricist, or songwriter. The author of a sound recording may be the performer featured in the recording or the producer who captured, manipulated, or edited the sounds that appear in the final recording. You may use the group registration option if all of the works were created by the same person, as shown in the example on the left. In this example, all three works were created by author A. Likewise, you may use this option if all of the works were created by the same co-authors, as shown in the example on the right. In this example, 
all three works were co-created by authors A and B. You may also use this option if all of the works being registered have a common author. This means that at least one of the authors must have contributed copyrightable authorship to each and every work in the group. Could you give us an example, please? Sure. In the example on the left side of this slide, tracks one, two, and three have a common author because each work was co-created by the same person. In other words, A is the co-author of every work in this group, even though A co-created each work with a different co-author, namely B, C, and D. And now let's look at another example. In the example on the right side, tracks four and five have a common author because each work was co-created by the same person. In other words, A is the co-author of tracks four and five, even though A co-created those works with a different co-author, namely B and C. By contrast, track six doesn't have a common author because the co-authors of that work, D and E, did not create any of the other works in this group. Now that we've discussed the authors of the works, tell us more about the copyright claimant. The copyright claimant may be either the author or co-authors of all of the works being registered, or the claimant may be the party that owns all of the exclusive rights that initially belonged to an author of all of the works being registered. Do all of the works need to have the same claimant? Yes. The copyright claimant for each work listed in the application must be the same person or organization. For example, if you plan to name a third party as a claimant, such as a music publisher or a record label, that party must own all of the exclusive rights that initially belonged to an author of all of the works being registered. In other words, if you plan to name a third party as the claimant, you should only list the works that are owned by that party. If a third party does not own all of the exclusive rights that initially belonged to an author of a particular work, you should not list that work in your application. And could you give us an example of that, Melissa? Sure. So in the example shown on your screen here, authors A and B created track one, and authors A and C created track two. A, B, and C transferred all of their exclusive rights in these works to company X. Tracks one and two may be registered with a group registration application by naming company X as the claimant for those works. Now here's another example. In the example shown on your screen here, authors A and D created tracks three and four. Both authors transferred 50% of their publishing rights to company Y. The authors retain the rest of their exclusive rights in these works. Tracks three and four may be registered with a group registration application by naming authors A and D as the claimant for those works. A third party may only be named as the copyright claimant if that party owns all of the exclusive rights that initially belonged to an author of all of the works being registered. In this situation, company Y cannot be named as a claimant because the company owns some, but not all of the exclusive rights in tracks three and four. Are there other requirements for using the gram option? Yes. We've discussed the eligibility requirements for this option. Now let's talk about the deposit requirements. After you file your application, you must submit one complete copy of each work being registered. Let's start with the deposit requirements for musical works. If you're registering a group of musical works with or without lyrics, you are strongly encouraged to upload separate audio files that contain a digital copy of each work, regardless of whether the album was distributed in a digital or physical format. If you submit your musical works in a physical format, such as a CD or LP, there will be significant delays in the examination of your works. What about the deposit requirements for sound recordings? The deposit requirements for sound recordings vary depending on whether the album was distributed in a physical or a digital form. If the album was distributed in the United States in a physical format, such as a CD or LP, you must submit two physical copies of the best edition of the entire album, including any printed or visually perceptible material that was distributed with the album, such as artwork, photos, or liner notes appearing on the album cover. By contrast, if the album was distributed solely in a digital format and was not distributed in a physical form, such as a CD or LP, then you may upload a digital copy of each sound recording that you want to register. You may also upload a digital copy of any photos, artwork, or liner notes that are included in your claim. Let's assume the album was published solely in a digital format. The applicant plans to upload a digital copy of their musical works 
or the sound recordings, do the audio files need to be uploaded in a particular manner? Yes, they do. First, each work must be uploaded in a separate audio file. Do not upload all of your works in a zip folder. Second, all of your works must be uploaded in an acceptable file format, such as MP3 or WAV. On our website, you can find a list of the file formats that the Copyright Office will accept. You can also find this list by going to copyright.gov, clicking on register your works, then clicking on echo acceptable file types on the right side of the page. If a file format is not shown on this list, do not upload your works in that format. And then the third requirement is particularly important, so please pay close attention here. When you complete the application, you must provide the title and track number for each musical work or each sound recording that you want to register. If you upload a digital copy of your works, the name assigned to each file must match the corresponding titles that you list in the application. The file name should also include the track number that was assigned to each work when it was published on the album. Do you have an example? Yes. In the example shown on your screen here, you'll see that with the first work, if a title of, of a work is The Birthday Party, and if that work was published on the album as track number two, both the title and the track number should be included in the name for the audio file containing that work. And notice that in each example shown on your screen here, the file name matches the corresponding title and track number that was listed on the application. If the title contains punctuation or other special characters, you don't need to include them in the file name. For example, if track number 12 is titled What's the Occasion ending with a question mark, the file may simply be named 12 What's the Occasion.mp3, omitting the apostrophe and question mark as shown on your screen. Now that we've covered the deposit requirements for RAM, can you show us the applications for registering musical works and sound recordings? Yes. And first I'll tell everyone how to find the applications. To find the applications, you visit www.copyright.gov and click on register a copyright. This will take you to the registration portal. Then you click the blue box to log into the electronic registration system and this will take you to the echo login screen. When you log into the electronic registration system, you'll be taken to the home screen. On the home screen, look for other registration options on the left side of the screen. And from there to get to the application, you'll click on the first link, register certain groups of published works. This will take you to a page with more information about group registration options. Carefully review the information on this screen, then click start registration. And note also that on the screens we're showing you today, we've highlighted some of the buttons for you in yellow to make them more visible, but they will not appear this way when you complete the application yourself. Next, on the type of group screen, you'll find a drop-down menu. If you're registering a group of musical works, choose musical works from an album in this menu. And if you're registering a group of sound recordings, choose sound recordings from an album. Carefully read the eligibility and deposit requirements for each application. Be sure your works satisfy all of these requirements. If you have questions about any of the requirements, use the links at the bottom of the screen to get more information. Once you have confirmed that your works are eligible for the GRAM application, you may check the confirmation box at the bottom of the screen. Then click continue to proceed with the application. What should an applicant do if their works do not meet all of the requirements for the GRAM application? If the works do not meet all of the requirements described on this screen, then the applicant should return to the home screen. And from there, they may choose another application. Once you've started the application, what should you do if you need help with a particular question? Before you complete each screen, be sure to read the instructions and examples provided. If you have questions, consult the help text that may be accessed from the application itself and the video tutorials that accompany each screen. Or you can contact the Public Information Office to speak with the Copyright Office Specialist. And Melissa, do the group registration applications have any special features that you'd like to highlight for our audience? Yes. We'll start by taking a look at the title screen. And here I'm going to show you the application for musical works from an album, but just to be clear, the same questions appear on the application for sound recordings from an album. On the title screen, you must provide the title for the album. You must provide a separate title for each musical work or each sound recording that you want to register. And you must provide the track numbers that were assigned to those works when they were published on the album. To begin, click new on the title screen. 
On this screen, you'll be asked to enter information about the album where the works were published. First, enter the album title in the space provided. Then, enter the date of first publication for the album. All of the works you submit must be published on the album on this date. Likewise, all of the works must be first published in the same country. To provide this information, select the name of that country from the drop-down menu. You are encouraged to provide the name of the record label that released the album. And if the record label assigned a cataloging number to the album, you're also encouraged to provide that information in the space provided. Next, please tell us if the album was distributed in a digital form or as a physical product, such as a CD or LP. If the album was distributed both in digital form and in a physical format, you should answer yes to both questions. You may submit at least two, but no more than 20 musical works or sound recordings with each application. Use this drop-down menu to tell us how many works you plan to submit. And in the year of completion space, enter the year that the musical works or sound recordings were completed. Here, you can see that we have a screen we've completed with the information for our example album. Once you've entered all of the information requested on this screen, click Save. The information you entered on the previous screen will appear in the table marked All Titles. As you can see, a group title has been automatically added to the application. The group title consists of the phrase, works published on the album, followed by the album title. In this case, the album is titled Solar System, so the group title is Works Published on the Album Solar System. Why is the group title needed, Melissa? The group title will be used to identify the claim as a GRAM registration. It will appear both on the registration certificate and in the Copyright Office's online public record. Next, we need to enter the titles and track numbers for the individual works being registered. Remember, all of the works listed on this screen must meet all of the eligibility requirements that we discussed earlier. One requirement is that the copyright claimant for each work listed in the application must be the same person or the same organization. The copyright claimant may be either the author or co-author of all of the works being registered, or the claimant may be the person or organization that owns all of the exclusive rights that initially belong to an author of all of the works being registered. This requirement is very important, so please pay close attention. When completing the title screen, you should only provide titles for the works that belong to the copyright claimant. If a particular work does not belong to the copyright claimant, you should not list that work on the title screen. And again, for additional information about these requirements, you can refer to the help text for each application to learn more. And then when you're ready to enter the titles and track numbers for your works, click new on the title screen to get started. Once again, we're showing you the application for musical works from an album, but the questions on the application for sound recordings from an album will be the same. On this screen, you'll provide title information for one individual musical work or sound recording. Carefully review the instructions on this screen, and if you need help, click the blue links to read the help text or click watch to watch a video tutorial that shows you how to complete this screen. In the space provided, you'll enter the title of a work that you plan to register. Then, enter the track number that was assigned to that work when it was published on the album. In this case, we're registering a work titled Jupiter, which was published on the album as track number five. The track number must be entered in numerical form and may contain no more than one or two digits. You should only enter one title and one track number in the spaces provided. Do not enter titles for two or more works in these spaces. In just a minute, we'll show you how to add titles for the rest of your works. If you plan to upload a digital copy of this work, remember that the file name must match the title and track number that you enter on this screen. In this case, the file should be named 05jupiter.mp3 as shown in the example on your screen here. And when you're done entering your title information, click save at the top of your screen to continue. The title and track number that you entered will appear in the table marked All Titles. If you need to edit or remove any information shown in the table, you can click the pencil or trash can icon. To add the titles for the rest of the works you're registering, click New and repeat the steps we discussed a moment ago. As we discussed before, on this screen, you enter the title of a work that you plan to register in the space provided. 
then enter the track number that was assigned to that work when it was published on the album. In this case, the second work we're registering is titled Venus, and it was published on the album as track number two. And again, when you're done, click Save at the top of your screen to continue. Here you can see that the additional title and track number we entered appear in the table marked all titles. And again, if you need to edit or remove any information shown in this table, you can click the pencil or trash can icon to do so. In today's example, we're only registering two works, so we finished entering our titles. But if you're registering more works, you should click new and repeat the steps that we discussed to enter a title for each individual work. Remember, you may register between two and 20 musical works or sound recordings with this application. Melissa, are there any other features that you'd like to highlight for our audience? Yes. Next, we'll take a look at the author's screen. And once again, just a reminder, we are showing you the application for musical works from an album. But to be clear, the same questions appear on the application for sound recordings from an album. Here, you must identify the author of the works that you want to register. If the works were created by two or more joint, joint authors, you must identify each joint author in the application. And as we mentioned earlier, all of the works must be created by the same author or the works must have a common joint author. Melissa, please remind us, what does common joint author mean? Yes, this means that at least one of the authors must have contributed copyrightable authorship to each and every work in the group. And again, before you get started on the author screen, carefully review the instructions on the screen. If you need help, click the blue links to read the help text or click watch to watch a video tutorial that shows you how to complete this screen. When you're ready to identify the author of your works, click new and a new screen will appear. On this screen, you'll enter the author's information in the spaces provided. If the author is an individual, enter that person's name in the individual author space. If the author is an organization, enter the name of that organization in the space provided. Then select yes to confirm that the organization created each work as a work made for hire. In either case, you'll need to identify the author's country of citizenship or domicile by selecting the appropriate country from the drop down menu. Next, you must identify the works that were created or co created by this author. And this part of the application is very important, so please pay close attention here as well. If this author created all of the works that you want to register, you may check the first box shown on your screen. You should check this box if this author created or co-created each and every work that you plan to submit the, to the Copyright Office. Do not check this box if this author created some, but not all of the works that you plan to register. Instead, in this case, you should complete the second box shown on your screen. The second box may be used to identify the specific works that this author created. To do so, enter the track numbers that were assigned to those works when they were published on the album. Do not enter the actual titles of the works in this space. Each track number should be entered as a number, and each number should be separated by a comma. Be sure that the track numbers that you enter in this box match the track numbers that you entered on the title screen. And remember, if you plan to upload a digital copy of your works, be sure to include the track number in the file name for each work. As shown in the example on your screen, note that you should enter only the track numbers for each work in the space on the author's screen. Do not enter the titles of the works in that space. Once you've entered all of the information requested on the author's screen, click the Save button at the top of your screen. The information you entered will appear in the table marked authors. If you need to edit or remove any information, again, you can click the pencil or trash can icon to do so. If the works were created by two or more co-authors, you should provide the requested information for each author. To do so, click the new button and then repeat the steps described a moment ago. Melissa, could you give us one more example before we move on? In the example on this screen, Clyde created three works that were published on an album as track numbers two, four, and seven. To register these works, you should enter Clyde's name in the individual author space. To identify the works he created, you may check the first box because Clyde created all of the works being registered. Now let's look at a different example. 
In the example shown on this slide, Clyde and Sarah co-created track nine. Sarah created tracks 11 and 13 by herself. In this situation, you should enter Clyde's name in the individual author box, but you should not check the first box shown on your screen because Clyde did not create all of the works being registered. He only created track number nine. To identify that work, you should enter the number nine in the second box. By contrast, Sarah created or co-created tracks nine, 11, and 13. After you enter her name in the individual author space, you may check the first box stating that she created all of the works being registered. Can we take a look at the Graham webpage one more time and review what's already there and what's to come? Yes. A screenshot of the Graham webpage is shown on the right side of the slide, and the webpage is located at copyright.gov slash Graham. You can also reach the Graham webpage by visiting copyright.gov and clicking the link for register your works. This will take you to the registration portal. Scroll down and look for group registration for works on an album of music and clicking that link will take you to the Graham webpage. And here on the Graham webpage, right now you'll find information that shows you where to find each application, links to the help text for each application, as well as the final rule that created this group registration option. And note that the Copyright Office will post additional resources, including FAQs, a circular, and video tutorials on this webpage in the coming weeks. Thank you very much, Melissa. We've saved some time for questions. Um, first question is, I completed an album, which I plan to release in two months. Can I register it on Gram before it is published? Um, so, no, you would not be able to use the Gram option before the album is published. Um, remember, in the requirements that we discussed, one of them was that all of the works must have been published on the same album. And so, due to that requirement, this has to be an album that's already published. Um, you could either wait until the album is published and then use the Gram option if, uh, if your works meet all of the other requirements. Or if you wanted to register your works before it was published, you would need to look into registration options for unpublished works. So next question, um, could the 10 to 20 songs on the album be a combination of both published and unpublished? Um, they could not. And this is for a similar reason to what we discussed. The requirement to use the Graham application or one of the requirements is that all of the works have to have been published on the same album. Um, so if you have a mix of published and unpublished works, you're not going to meet that requirement. And typically when we are talking about an album, we're talking about one unit where all of the songs or sound recordings were distributed together. Um, so everything would need to be published together to qualify for this Graham option. Thank you, Melissa. Um, next question. Uh, my album contains 28 tracks. How should I register it? I'm assuming I'll need to use two Gram applications, but I'm wondering if there's a specific way that the office would like us to group the works. Sure. So as we talked about earlier, um, and what I think this question is getting at is that you may only submit between two and 20 works on a Gram application. So if you have an album that contains more tracks than that, where all of the Gram requirements are met, um, it would be okay to split them up into two applications. Um, and the applicant could split them up any way they choose. We don't have any preference for how many works they put on which application, as long as they don't go over 20 works on one application. Um, and then as we saw when we walked through some of the application, the application itself asks for the album title information and the specific track numbers. So as long as they divide up the tracks, we will get all of the appropriate information about the album and the track numbers. Thank you, Melissa. Next question. My album is available as digital downloads and as a compact disc. Can I just upload electronic files in that case? Uh, the very short answer is that it depends. And then we'll go into a little more detail. So. This is going to depend on what type of work you're registering, whether you're registering musical works or sound recordings from an album, and it's going to depend on how and where your album was first published. So we'll start with musical works because that is the most straightforward case. Um, 
if you are registering musical works, you can always upload a copy of your files for the gram registration. And in fact, that we prefer that you do so um, because if you send us a physical copy, it could delay your registration. Um, so in that case, you would upload one file containing each musical work, uh, meeting all of the file naming requirements that we talked about before. And then if you have chosen the application for sound recordings from an album, this is going to depend on how and where your works were first published. So if you are registering sound recordings that were first published in the United States, and if they were published in a physical format, such as a CD or LP, you are required to send us two copies of the best edition. And you can find more specifics about best edition on our website, but this is basically the best edition that was available at the time you're making your registration. So think a commercial CD and LP with all of the packaging and inserts that, that come with it, you would need to send us two copies of that. If you are sending us, if you are registering sound recordings that were first published in another country, you would need to either send us one copy of the work as first published in that country, um, one physical copy, or you could send us one copy of the best edition if the work was later published in a physical format in the United States. And then if you were registering um, an album of sound recordings and the works were only published in a digital format, you could upload your works in that scenario. And again, you would just need to follow all of the file naming conventions and things that we talked about. Um, I know I just went through a lot of scenarios. So if anyone has this question, I encourage them to consult the help text on our website, um, look for circulars that talk more about that best edition requirement we discussed, or give us a call or send us an email and we can look more into specific situations. Thank you, Melissa. Next question, uh, on my CD, I wrote six songs and my friend Stacy wrote four. How many gram applications do we need to file to register all 10? Okay, so in this situation, it sounds like our applicant has written six songs by themselves and then their friend wrote four songs. So we can see already that these works don't meet that common author requirement. There's no author who contributed copyrightable authorship to each song that the applicant is trying to register. Um, so the applicant doesn't say anything about whether um, there's a third party claimant or anything like that, but taking the most straightforward situation and the most likely situation, looking back to what we talked about earlier, um, in this case, we'll assume that the author is, is going to be named as the claimant on the application. So here we have uh, that our applicant or our, our questioner wrote six songs themselves and they're the claimant for those songs. So they would submit one application for those six songs um, and naming themselves as the author and the claimant and giving all of the appropriate information with the track numbers and things for those six songs. And then for the four songs that the applicant's friend wrote, that would be a separate gram application that would name the friend as the author of those songs and as the claimant. So we have six songs written by the applicant, four songs written by their friend, and those would be registered on two separate gram applications. Thank you very much, Melissa. Uh, next question. I wrote only two of the songs on my album, tracks two and 11. The rest of the tracks are covers. Should I list every song title on my application or only the two songs I wrote? Ah, great question. So here it sounds like the applicant is trying to register just the two songs on their album that they wrote. And so this is something that we looked at a little bit with the title screen where we talked about only providing the information for the works that the applicant created and is, uh, is the claimant for and intends to register. So in this case, um, our applicant only wrote two songs on the album and they should only provide the title information for those two songs, and they should not list songs that are written and owned by other people that they're not including in the registration. Thank you, Melissa. Next question. In November, I published an album containing 12 tracks, but track nine was released a month earlier. Can I register all the works together? Oh, great. So this is a question. Um, you, you may remember when we talked about the requirements, we hinted at this requirement that um, generally all of the works have to be first published on the album. Um, but we talked about this limited exception for some works that were published individually. Um, so I'll say a little bit about that requirement here. And then I again encourage everyone to look at the help text to find out more about this. 
but uh, so as we talked about, generally all of the works have to be first published on the album, but there is a limited exception for works that were first published individually. So typically this would be a work that was first published as a single. In this case, if a work is first published individually and then later included on the album, if that track meets all of the other gram requirements that we discussed, you could include that track as part of your gram registration. Um, to do so, there's a space at the end of the application where you have provided some additional information about that track that was first published earlier. Uh, most notably, you would provide the date of first publication for that track. Um, and again, if you are interested in using this exception for your registration, uh, please take a look at the help text for each application. You can either find that from within the application itself, or you can go to the Gram webpage that we showed you and all of the help text is there. And this help text will tell you exactly where to look on the application to provide this information and exactly what information you need to include that previously published track in the registration. Thank you, Melissa. Next question. Is the limit for unpublished group of works, sound recording or musical works, still 10 songs per application? If so, any chance this is going to change to reflect the same 20 limit for gram? Um, that is correct. The applicant is asking about the group registration of unpublished works, group registration option, um, in case everyone is not familiar with that. Um, that application has some different requirements, and one of them is that you may register up to 10 unpublished works that meet certain requirements. Um, so this is a different application with different requirements and a different number of works than is permitted on the GRAM registration. So as we talked about on the GRAM registration, you may register between two to 20 musical works or sound recordings. Um, and I don't, I don't believe that there are any plans to change the group unpublished registration requirements as a result of that. Thank you, Melissa. Next question. Under Graham, may an album contain derivative works if there is a common composer for all the songs on the album? Yes, so this is a section of the application that we didn't show you. Um, but a derivative work for anyone who's not familiar would be a work that incorporates um, previously registered material, previously published material, material from the public domain. Um, so a work that incorporates some type of pre-existing material. These may be included on the gram application as long as all the other requirements are met. And we didn't look at it today, but there is a screen on the application called limitation of claim. And that screen will ask you to identify any pre-existing material that your work includes. Um, maybe if you previously registered a song and now you're registering a new version of it on Graham, or if you previously registered a sound recording and you're now registering a remix of that sound recording, there are spaces on that screen where you would tell us what the pre-existing material is and then what new material is included in the claim that you are basing your copyright claim on. So that's where you might tell us that you did a remix, you created a new musical arrangement, something like that. Um, and again, there's help text linked directly from that screen, or you can look at all of the help text by going to the main Gram webpage. Um, so if anyone is looking to register derivative works on the Gram application, absolutely consult the help text that will tell you more about how to complete that screen and give some examples. Thank you. Next question. If a photograph on the album cover has been used with permission, but was previously registered for copyright by the photographer, can it be included in the Gram application for sound recordings along with the liner notes and other things? So for a photograph, it's, it's going to depend on whether all of the other Gram requirements are met for that work. And I know that we didn't talk a lot in detail today about artwork, photographs, and liner notes, but these works are subject to all of the other requirements that we talked about. Um, they have to all be created by the same author or there has to be a common author who contributed to both the sound recordings and the artwork, photographs, liner notes, whatever additional works you were looking to register. Um, the claimant for all of the works has to be the same. And so in this case from this question, it sounds like maybe this um, is a photograph that they've licensed from someone else but that wouldn't necessarily have the same author as the sound recordings. So in that case, you probably couldn't include it in the gram registration um, because it wouldn't meet all of the other requirements. Um, otherwise, the requirement for um, artwork, photographs, and layer notes is that they, in addition to meeting all of the other requirements, 
they have to have been first published on the album. Um, there's no, the exception that we talked about for previously published works applies to musical works and sound recordings, but it doesn't apply to artwork, photographs, liner notes. Um, so it would need to be uh, first published on the album, but if it was previously registered, but had not been published before, it would be fine to indicate that on the application. That again, that's a, a very specific situation. So if anyone is trying to register artwork, photographs and layer notes, I encourage them to, to check out the help text and give us a call or send us an email if they have more specific questions on that. Thank you, Melissa. Next question, what date do you use if you released a single from the album first? Oh, great question. So we started to talk about this a little bit when we talked about the exception for previously published works, but we didn't go into a ton of detail. So if you remember when we did a little bit of the walkthrough of the application, we looked at the title screen and the first screen on there was the where you provide information about um, publication information, title information for the album itself. And so on that screen, if you're registering a group of works that were published together on an album, but there was a single that was published earlier, on that screen, you only want to give us information for the album. We want to know on that screen when all of the works were first published together on that album. And then if you are using that exception to include a work that was previously published as a single, um, at the very end of the application, on the certification screen, there's a field called Notes to Copyright Office, and that's where you would give us the publication date for that previously published work. And again, if you go to the help text for the application, it will give you all the specifics on exactly where that space is and exactly what to include. Thank you, Melissa. Um, next question. Could fewer than all the works on a single album be registered under Gram while the rest of the works are registered individually? Yes, absolutely. So as, as we talked about, Graham is a, um, a special group registration accommodation that has a, a number of requirements that need to be met. And we certainly anticipate that maybe there are five songs from an album that meet the Graham requirements, and then some songs that don't meet those requirements that need to be registered individually. Um, so for example, if I wrote five songs myself on an album and I am the claimant for those songs, and then I have some other songs that that wouldn't meet the requirements to be included in the group, I could register the five songs that I wrote where I am the claimant together on one gram application. And then for the individual songs, maybe if there's different combinations of authors and claimants for all of them, you could absolutely register each of those remaining songs individually on a standard application. Um, using gram for some of the works from an album doesn't preclude you from using the standard application to register other works from the album individually. Thank you, Melissa. On the sound recording application, is there a separate part of the application that allows you to file, uh, that allows you to include the photographs that are part of the, uh, the album? Yes, uh, that's, that's a great question too. I know that we only showed you the application for musical works from an album today. So if you remember a little bit earlier, we looked at the author screen. Um, there's that main author screen where you click new and you add your authors and you tell us if that author contributed to all of the tracks or only some. On the sound recording application, once you enter all of your authors of the sound recordings and you click continue to the next screen, that will take you to a separate screen where you can enter the information for the authors of any artwork, photographs, and or liner notes that you want to register. That screen is very similar to the author screen we looked at today. And the only difference is that there you provide the author information just like we looked at. But instead of a checkbox, there's a drop down menu where you can choose either artwork and artwork and or photographs, um, the text of the liner notes on the album, or all of those types of works. And again, uh, there's help text for that as well. So certainly take a look at that if you are interested in including those works in your sound recording registration. Thank you, Melissa. Next question, what if you decide to release the physical uh, product after you have registered for digital release? Do you need to do a separate registration for the physical? Uh, you do not. So we talked earlier about the deposit requirements and those requirements depend on what formats of your work are available at the time of registration. Um, we'll talk about sound recordings published in the United States because that's the most straightforward example, but 
Um, if you were registering works first published outside the United States, you would want to give us a call or consult our website for more information. But when we were talking about sound recordings first published in the United States, the deposit requirement depends on what was available at the time of your registration. If the work was only available in digital format at that time, it would be fine for you to upload uh, one copy of each sound recording and any artwork, photographs, or liner notes that you want to register. And after the registration is completed, if you later released that album in a physical format, you would not need to re-register. All of your works would still be registered. So that release in a physical format later would not change anything. It's just that if your recordings came out in a physical format before the time that you make your grant registration, you would need to send us physical copies. Thank you, Melissa. Next question, what are the deposit requirements for photographs, liner notes, and artwork? Uh, so this is, this is going to be very similar to what we just talked about with the sound recordings. It's going to depend on whether that album was released in a digital or a physical format. So if the album was only released in a digital format, you may upload a copy of your files. And in fact, we would really encourage you to do so because that's gonna make your registration go more quickly if you upload files when that's available to you. So in that case, you would upload one file containing each sound recording and then files with all of the artwork, photographs and liner notes that were published with the album that you intend to register. Um, if the work was published in a physical format in the United States before the time of your registration, you would need to send us two copies of the best edition of that work, which again is um, the edition most suitable to the Library of Congress for its purposes. This is generally gonna be a commercial CD or LP copy um, that includes the disc itself, as well as any packaging, uh, liner notes, inserts, that sort of thing. So if your work was published in a physical format, you would need to send us two of that physical format, including that additional material. Thank you, Melissa. Next question, could you please address how to best go about registering an album that meets the Graham eligibility requirements, but that contains more than 20 musical works or recordings? I'm assuming we'll need to register an album with 21 and more works or recordings using two or more Graham applications, but wondering if there's a specific way the Copyright Office prefers us to format the applications for albums that fall into this category. Uh, since there will be multiple registrations that cover a single album. Yes, they have it exactly right. And I think we hinted at this with one of our um, very early questions, but let's, uh, let's talk about it again in case anyone has a larger album like this that they have questions about. Um, as we talked about, there can, you can include between two and 20 musical works or sound recordings on your Graham registration. And those works just need to meet all of the requirements that we covered before. So if you have an album where you have more than 20 works that meet those requirements, you would just split them onto multiple gram applications. And as we looked at before, the application asks you for really specific information about the album title, the publication information, and the specific track numbers of the works that you're registering. So you don't need to do any special formatting or anything like that because the application is going to get all of the information we need about the album itself and the specific tracks that you've included on each application. Thank you, Melissa. Next question. Uh, is it required that the artwork and liner notes also have the same author as the sound recording to be on the same gram registration? Yes, and I, I know that we didn't touch on this much in the main presentation, so I hope that we are getting to some of these questions about artwork, photographs, and liner notes um, in this question and answer portion. Um, the artwork, photographs, and liner notes need to meet all of the requirements that we talked about earlier. So as we talked about earlier, they all have to have been first published on the album. Um, you can't use that previously published work exception for that material. The authors of that material have to be the same as the authors of the sound recordings or there has to be at least one common joint author that contributed to every work in the group. So in this case, that would mean that at least one author must have contributed to every sound recording you were registering, as well as any artwork, photographs, and or liner notes that you're including. And then the claimant for every work needs to be the same as well. Um, so I know we didn't talk about that in a lot of detail, but the exact same requirements apply when you're including those additional works in your registration. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, next question. If various songs on an album were released digitally one by one over a six to nine month period, 
but are now offered both individually and as an album, would this qualify as a grand filing? Um, so it's it's going to depend on um, whether all of the works were published together on the album and whether they meet all of the requirements and then whether all of the works were first published as individual works previously to that. Um, so it's, you know, it, it can be a little tricky to give a clear yes or no without looking at all of the facts for an album, but generally if all of the works were published together on an album, if they meet all of the other requirements that we discussed, um, you could register that on a gram application and you could include a work that was first published individually before it was on the album. Um, but remember that it has to have been first published individually. It has to have been first published in the same country as your album. And you would need to follow the steps for that exception to tell us um, all of the earlier publication information for that work. Thank you, Melissa. Next question. If someone is looking for a sound recording that was registered under Graham, can that sound recording be located by a member of the public as easily as if it had been registered on one of the older registration forms for a single sound recording? Yes, so I know that we didn't look at the public record today, but um, all of the information that we showed you that uh, you were entering on the application will appear in the public record as well. Um, so you would be able to search by the album title, um, you would be able to search by individual contents titles. Those individual work titles will be included in the public record. Um, and then you would be able to tell that it was a Graham registration because the title in the public record would say works published on the album followed by the album title. But you could certainly use that album title or contents title to search our public record, just like you may have been used to doing before. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Next question. Um, is with respect to the hip hop genre, which uh, often has uh, many authors for each work. Is there a limitation to the number of songwriters or publishers for any particular work on a Gram application? Um, no, there is no limit. The only, the only restrictions are the, the um, eligibility requirements that we discussed earlier. So the authors of every work either need to be the same or there needs to be a common joint author that contributed to every work and then the claimant for every work needs to be the same. So uh, if you have five songs that, that five authors each contributed to or more than five authors, I know there's often more than that. As long as you, all of the other eligibility requirements are met, there's no limit to the number of authors. All right, thank you. Let's make this next one the last question. Uh, if a deluxe version of an album is released with 10 previously registered sound recordings, and two new unregistered sound recordings. Can I use the Gram application for those two new recordings with the previously registered recordings listed in the limitation of claim? Um, so it sounds, if I understand the example correctly, it sounds like there are two works that are first published uh, for the same time that are first published uh, together for the first time on this album. And so in that case, um, if the, um, if those, two new recordings met all of the other gram requirements, you could um, register those together on a gram application. You wouldn't necessarily need to exclude the others if they were already registered separately and if they had been registered as part of another album, um, as part of an earlier version of the album. But if the two other tracks, the two kind of bonus tracks were new to this album and being registered for the first time here, if they met all the requirements, you could put them together on a gram application. All right, thank you, Melissa. That will conclude today's webinar. Um, we encourage our participants to take part in a brief survey regarding your experience that will uh, pop up when you sign out of the session. We use this to improve our webinar programs, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. Thank you uh, for your participation today, and please join us for the next webinar.